Uniqlo are a brand that, despite their relatively short history, have managed to truly prove themselves as one of the biggest clothing basics companies in the world, priding themselves in life wear in their own words. Simple made better. In this video, we aim to tell a story of how this brand went from small beginnings to its position today. Be sure to like and subscribe for more, and we hope you enjoy the Uniqlo story. The founder of Uniqlo, Tadashi Yanai, was born in 1949 in the Yamaguchi Prefecture in Japan. He grew up in difficult years for Japan following World War II. When handed his family's menswear shop, Yanai had ideas of his own. He wanted to change the designs and expand the business. Realising he could build an empire with large amounts of wealth and still be a morally uncorrupted person, he began to expand the business. Adding women's clothing to the store and rebranding it in 1984 to Unique Clothing Warehouse, which later became Uniqlo, he was ready to begin growing the business. Uniqlo continued to grow over the coming years, experiencing vast growth and market saturation. Ten years to the date of its first opening, there were over 100 shops in Japan. Going into the early 90s, Japan were experiencing a great recession, meaning many people in the country were desperately trying to cut back spending, meaning Uniqlo's basic, affordable items were gold dust to consumers. Yanai further capitalised on this by, in 1993, making a bold, almost unheard of move for the time, moving all production to China. This meant production costs were largely decreased, further maximising profits and helping them to truly become a giant in the Japanese clothing market. But they wanted more, and global expansion was on the way. Despite Tadashi's big goals for Uniqlo, the start globally was shaky to say the least. In 2002, they opened 21 stores in and around London, and three more were opened in New Jersey. It quickly became obvious how this was, financially at least, a complete failure. By 2006, only 8 stores remained open in London. This failure has been put down to multiple reasons, including opening too many stores too soon, not establishing enough of a brand identity, and mistakes in sizing metrics. Uniqlo didn't account for the fact that the average Japanese man was smaller than the average British or American man, for example. Something had to be done. Uniqlo wasn't cool enough. That was essentially the conclusion that Japanese designer Kashiwa Sato came to, and told Yanai, after discussions had taken place. Uniqlo needed to rebrand themselves abroad. So they did, teaming up with people such as Charlotte Monson, Ravina Carver, and Jill Sander. They released more hip lines to great success, and found themselves stabilising more in other countries, allowing them to steadily grow to where they are today. As of the making of this video, Uniqlo operates in 16 countries worldwide but the core philosophy remains unchanged. Provide good quality, well-designed basics, and sell them at affordable prices. Thanks for watching our video. Make sure to like if you liked it, subscribe for more, and leave a comment of which brands you would like to see us do next. Click on the videos on the screen to see other brand stories, and we hope you enjoyed.